So let's learn from them because Paul is saying, if you are not worthy in coming, then you know what? You sin against the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So Paul says, therefore, every person ought to, what's the word? Say it, examine himself. So friends, right now, we are going to have an examination. I know we don't like examination. Okay, can say ganhak examination today? Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Okay, okay. I, I can sympathize with you. Okay, we don't like examination, but life is full of examination. Diba? You cannot be a doctor without the board exam. You cannot be a CPA without the board exam. Right? Same thing here. The Bible says we should examine ourselves before we eat the bread or drink the cup from the Lord. So here's the first attitude. Okay, let's read together. We should come sincerely because we commemorate Christ's death. All right? Sincerely. Now, according to St. Paul, the reason why some of them were sick and were weak and some of them died because they were not sincere in their worship. They come to the church for the wrong reason. Amen? Wrong reason. They were not, you know, sincerely looking at the dead. So when we come to the church, especially on a Lord's Supper, okay, the first thing that we must do is we need to understand that the Lord's Supper is a memorial. It is a memorial service, okay? It looks back to the past. So when we are gathered here, we are supposed to remember what? Jesus' death on the cross. That is why in verse 24 and 25, you have these words. Jesus said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in what? In remembrance of me. And then verse 25, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. So the first attitude is this, sincerity. We have to be sincere in our heart and in our mind that I am here, okay, first and foremost, because I want to memorialize the death of Jesus Christ. Now, what's so important with the death of our Lord Jesus Christ? What's so important with his death? It's so unusual that in a worship service, in a celebration, we are looking back to a, you know, a tragic death. But the death of Christ is crucial. It is the, the cornerstone of our faith. You know why? Because his death makes you and me, you know, saved today. His death on that cross saved me. I don't know with you. I hope. His death on the cross paid for my sin. All right? So tell the person next to you, Jesus' death on the cross paid for your sin. Okay, that's the reason why we have to be sincere because we are here not for ourselves, but we are here to memorialize what Jesus said. Again, in verse 26, it says there, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. So friends, when we come to the Lord's Supper or the Lord's Table, kinsay na sa tong mind dapat? Alright. Our Lord Jesus Christ's death. Okay? Monas, yeah. Now, in the Corinthian church, they were not sincere. Okay? They were not thinking of Christ's death. They were only thinking of, what's our food now? Diba? They were thinking of just the social gathering. So, the worship service ended up like what? It's just a social gathering. No more worship happening. Okay, here's the second attitude. We should come sensibly because we, we are counting on what? Christ's return. So it's not just a looking back. Hello? The communion service or the Lord's Supper, it's not just a looking back, but it's also a looking forward. So this is the eschatological aspect of the, the service. Okay, when you say eschatological, what's the meaning of that, Pastor? Okay, it's, it's a theology that makes you kanabitang, kanabitang mga anak ka? Diba mo nagitaw iskatol? Katol, isura na eh. 
Uh, mga tool juga. Okay. Sama na palisura na pastor. Eh. Okay. So remind yourself when the pastor starts talking about heavy stuff like second coming, uh, the antichrist, the rapture, the great tribulation. These are all scatological. And so mga tool, mga tool yun. Right? The word eschaton means last things. Okay? So you now add that to your list of Greek words. So eschaton, last things. So eschatology means what? The study of the last things. And we are now in the last things. Right? So Paul is saying, look at the verse. For as often as you shall eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death, but it's not His death only. Until... He comes. So my dear friends, the attitude when, when we come together in this gathered fellowship and then we prepare ourselves for the Lord's table, we are also proclaiming that Lord come. So an example of how we prepare ourselves is this. Before you receive the, the elements, you say, Lord, I thank you that you died on that cross for my sins. Okay? That's the first one. Okay, we have sincerity. And then, Lord, I also thank you that you are coming again. That as I partake of this, I am looking forward to eat this with you. You know, in your kingdom. Because in, in Matthew, okay, Matthew 26, 29. Okay, please open your Bibles. Laptops, iPads. Uh, washing machines. All gadgets, please. Go to Matthew 26. Okay, look at verse 29. Oh, no, my. Cannot see. Okay, verse. look at verse 29. Are you there? Found it? Okay, look, look at verse 29. This is the communion. This is the Lord's Supper. Jesus said, I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until when? Until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. You see? So Jesus is saying that every time you partake in the Lord's Supper, you are being reminded that we are simply rehearsing. So the communion service, listen, this is just a rehearsal of the main thing, of the main course, of the main feast. When? When Christ will come. So for now, you say, Pastor, kagamay po ang bread, oy. Okay? Yeah, gamaya po sa cup, Pastor. Okay? So for now, this is just a rehearsal. Because on that day, I tell you, when Christ will come, you're going to be sharing big loaves of bread. As in, ana juga mo pigas. Okay? O niya, inikinom po mo, ana po. Okay? There's going to be plenty. So right now, I want you to understand that we don't actually feast over this. These are just what? Symbols. These are just reminders. Okay? So that is why in our communion service, para di mo mabitin, we have snacks after. Okay? So we have snacks. Dito, banat mo kaon. And by the way, you can bring as much bread as you want. Okay, please do that. Okay, usay, magpublima mi how to keep the, the leftovers. Alright? So bring your bread. Maybe wa moy pang breakfast tomorrow. Okay? We will be providing you. So, nanakay libring breakfast. O niya kung coffee food. Kung nakay container, butangin na lang po kape. Okay? Uh, Baga-baga naman yun ta. Tiwasa na lang yung pagabaga. Okay? Da kape. So, okay na. Di na ko masuko. So, ushers. If some people are doing that, no, by the way, we are, not, we are no longer using the three-in-one, no? but kanang takos-takos, no? you have the coffee. Okay, that's the ayan lang kasabi, ha? Kay, they have the, the, koan, the blessing. Okay? Because, on the meaning of fellowship? Sharing. sharing. Okay, again, it means sharing. Okay, third, so we should come uh, sincerely, sensibly, again, sensibly meaning wisely because we need to be watchful because anytime Jesus Christ will, will come. Amen? Remember, the Bible says, He will come when you least expect Him. He's like a thief in the night. You know? 
He's like a thief. And that's why when we come to the Lord's table, we have to be sensible. We have to be mindful that my Lord is coming again. Third, we should come sacredly. Okay, they also miss this one. Because we commune with Christ's presence. Okay, this is what we call the sacramental aspect. All right, now the word sacrament, not all Protestant church use the word sacrament. And then when you say sacrament, okay, we, okay, how many Catholics are here tonight? Can I see the hands of the, our Catholic brethren? Higher, higher, please. Okay, okay, no problem. We have so many Catholics here. I myself used to be a Catholic. Okay, uh, when you say sacrament, how many sacraments are there in the Catholic Church? Okay, there are seven. And then, we Protestants, we only have, we only have two. What's the first one? Uh, the baptism and then the Lord's Supper, this one. Okay. Now, this is the sacramental view. Uh, uh, some churches, they don't use the word sacrament. They're allergic to the word sacrament. We still use the word sacrament because we believe it speaks so much of uh, the thing that we're doing because it is sacred. That's the idea of sacrament. It is sacred. And the meaning of sacrament is this. It's the means of grace. In other words, when we partake of it, there's grace imparted to us. Now, let me explain. Now, why is this sacramental? Now, if the Lord's Supper is just a memorial, why is it that people will become sick and even die when they approach it unworthily? I mean, if it's just an ordinary bread and wine, if it's just an ordinary, you know, it's just symbol, why do you think Paul is saying, that's the reason why some of you are weak, some of you are sick, and some of you died because you, are, you were not respecting and honoring the Lord's Supper. Now, look at verse 29. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, without recognizing the Lord. In other words, in your mind and in your heart, what's, what's going to be the effect? There is judgment on that person. Now, the word judgment there, it's not about condemnation. It's about discipline. All right? Now, in, in, in 1 Corinthians, there are two judgments that Paul is talking here. Now, previously in chapter 5, there is judgment given to one member. He says, there's one member of the church who is committing immorality. All right? Uh, the person is having a relationship with his stepmother. And Paul says, that is not right. Okay, even if they are not related, there's no incest there, but that is not right. So that's immorality. And the Corinthian church simply what? Permitted it. And so if you, if you look back to, to chapter 5, Paul is saying that person must be what? Must be excommunicated. All right? And then he brings judgment. Okay? He even says that let Satan take care of his body. Anyway, he's saved already. So that's judgment. Okay? Now, what is discipline? Here's discipline. My, listen. When you are a child of God, you have a special protection from God. And that special protection gives away demons to attack you. You see, demons attack every day, every person. But if you're a believer, somehow, because you are in fellowship with God, you are protected. Okay? Now, what happens when you, you fall? What happens when you sin? Okay? What happens? This sort of a force field is gone. All right? What happens? When we sin, we break fellowship with God. And so we become vulnerable to what? To the attacks of Satan. All right? Now, that's what's happening to these people. Because they were sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. What happened? They are now vulnerable for demons to do something. Remember, demons are the enemies. All the demons want is to destroy you, to make you sick, you know, to put you down, to put your business down. And as long as we're in fellowship with God, by God's grace, you know, they cannot harm us. Of course, not if it is really God's will. Because there are times that God permits, you know, bad things to happen to Christians. 
for His purpose. And sometimes we don't understand God's purpose. Okay? You get me? So, the, that, that, that connection is destroyed. That's why these people were sick and their, their being sick is not physical. It's spiritual. Okay? It's spiritual in nature. Okay? And some of them even died. Now, question, Pastor, are they saved? Yes. They would still go to heaven, but they already forfeited their physical life. Why? Because they have been judged or disciplined by the Lord. Now, what's the meaning of that verse? Now, there are three meanings in church history. Okay, I want you to write this down. What's the meaning of the pastor? Nga? When, when, when we approach the Lord's table, Paul says, if you don't recognize the body of the Lord, you will be judged. Puyawa na pastor eh. Okay, so explain. Now, there are three explanations. Number one, the Roman Catholic view is what we call the transubstantiation. Okay? Transubstantiation. Okay? Bago na siya station. Okay? Bago na siya. Di na siya MRT station. It's a transubstantiation. Dili po na siya substation. Okay? What is that teaching? It's a teaching that the elements, are you following? The bread, the unleavened bread, and the wine upon the consecration of the priest, they actually become literally the, the body or the flesh of Jesus, and the wine becomes the real blood. Although, according to the teaching, that although your eyes sees the same bread, but literally, it becomes the blood of Jesus. Okay, so for, for Roman Catholics, every time you partake the bread, you're actually eating the flesh of Jesus, and every time you drink, you actually drink the blood. Okay, that's the Roman Catholic view. Okay, the Lutheran view. Okay, when Martin Luther okay, started his 95 Thesis, one of those things he, he corrected the church was that there are some wrong practices, unbiblical. And so he says, no, we don't find in the Bible that the disciples or the apostles were really eating the actual flesh of Jesus and the actual blood. Okay, according to Martin Luther, paraphrase, you know, that would become, make us cannibals. And that would make us vampires. That's, that's very out of sync in the Bible because the Bible even forbids eating meat with blood. In fact, eating blood is a sin. And so, if Christ says, drink my blood, then Christ is breaking his own his own law. So that could not be. And so he says, well, maybe it's consubstantiation. Okay, what's that? He's saying this, when, when people partake of the bread and the wine, they are actually really uh, receiving Jesus Christ, but not the literal flesh, but Christ is in. In and through the, the elements. Okay? So when I eat, it's, it's bread, but Jesus is there. Okay, so naagya pun siya, naagya pun siya pag, uh, ano, pero dili na. But then there's a third view, and this is the reform view, and this is the Protestant view, and this is our view. Okay? And we call it simply communion. Okay, what's the meaning of that, Pastor? There is real presence of Christ, but not in, but through the partaking of the sacred symbols. In other words, when we partake the elements, they remain elements, they remain bread and wine. Nothing happens there. What happens is not inside there, but what happens inside our hearts. Because when we receive it worthily, in other words, with the right attitude, Jesus Christ, His presence will be with us, okay? Through the partaking of the communion. And, you know, what happens to the negative is true to the positive. Now, what's the happening? What happened to the people because they were negatively receiving? They were? They were sick. They were weak and they died. Okay? Now, question, Pastor, what if we do it the right way? You get the, the opposite. So, here's the blessing of the communion. So, when we come to the Lord's table with the right attitude, you know, we think back of His death, I look forward to His coming, and then, Saturday third, you know, I really take it sacredly because this is the symbol of my Lord's body and blood. You know what will happen? You will be healed. 
Okay? And you have to believe there is grace imparted. We receive grace. That is why it's so important not to miss the communion. Why? Because there, that's the time where God grants grace. So if you are weak right now, and I don't know what's your weakness. Maybe it's a physical weakness or maybe spiritual. Listen to this. There is healing. There is healing in the Lord's Supper. What else? You are not sick, but you are weak. There is strength. Hello, are you listening? There is strength imparted. And then, you don't die. You get life. What's the opposite of death? You get life. Okay? So, with the right attitude, you get the right benefit. You don't get the curses. You get the benefit. And where is that pastor in the Bible? It's here in 1 Corinthians 10, 16. Look at this. Ingon si Paul, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion koinonia? In the blood of Christ, or in the, it should be, okay, yeah, blood of Christ. The bread which we break, is it not a communion in the body of Christ? Now, what's the expected answer? Yes. So Paul is saying, when, when we partake the bread and, you know, the, the wine, we actually commune with Christ, all right? And so when we commune with Christ, what's the, what's the result? Blessing is imparted. So the, the communion, actually, you know, the elements, they are not food for our tummy. That is why gamay gina siya. Okay? If you think, mabusog ka na, okay, you're on a diet maybe. <laughs> but that's not the food for the body. It's the food for our soul. Because when we get the right attitude, you get what? You get healing. You got strength. And you get the grace of life imparted to you. Amen? You get the grace. And this is what Westminster uh, Confession of Faith says about the, the Lord's Supper. Those who eat and drink in a worthy manner partake of Christ's body and blood. Not physically, remember? They remain sim symbols. But spiritually. So we are fed spiritually. By faith, they are nourished with the benefits of Christ through His death and resurrection and thus grow in grace. My dear friends, do you want to grow in grace? Do you want to be, you know, healthy? And it, this is not just physical health. All, all forms of health. Okay? Do you want life? When Jesus said, when Jesus said, I came to give you life, Okay? You need to be reminded of that because that, that wordings of Christ, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That is offered every time the Lord's Supper is served. Amen? Again, it has nothing to do with the bread. It has nothing to do with the wine. It has something to do with the sacramental aspect because Jesus said, every time you do this, you will remember me. And what's the example? Okay, Luke, Luke 24. Okay, there's, there's an incident in Luke 24. That's the resurrection of Jesus. Okay? There's a portion there that two disciples were walking towards where? Okay? Road to Emmaus. And then Jesus Christ, the, the, the risen Lord, joined them. Okay, kaila basta ni Jesus wala. They did not recognize Christ. And you know what? In that journey, Jesus Jesus, you know, shared to them the gospel from Genesis to Malachi. And still, they could not recall. But then, towards evening, Jesus invited them for the Last Supper. And you know what happened? When Jesus started breaking the bread and sharing the cup, then the Bible says, look, look, I, I love that portion. Okay, I want you to open. Go, go, go. All right, are you going there? Math? Did I say Matthew? Luke 24. Okay, Luke 24, please, everyone. All right, Luke 24. Okay, look at verse 30. Are you following? Luke 24, verse 30. When he was on the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then, what happened? Their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. 
they asked each other, Where, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? You see what happened there, my dear friends? When Jesus Christ did the communion, what happened? Their eyes were open, their hearts were touched. The same thing with us every time. Every time the Christians gather for fellowship and the Lord's Supper, our eyes will be open. Amen? Our hearts will burn with the passion of Christ. That is why it's so important that we receive the sacrament with the right attitude all right here's the fourth one okay so there's the look okay let's review so when we take the lord's supper there's a backward look we look back to his death there's a forward look for his second coming and then there's an inward look because remember i'm communing with my lord but then there is also a sidewar sideward look we should come selflessly because we consider each other. Friends, you cannot partake the communion alone. Okay, are you listening? You cannot take the Lord's Supper alone. Why? Because it loses its meaning. The meaning of the Lord's Supper is what? Communion. And it, communion means sharing. If you're, if you're the one eating it, there's no sharing. All right? That is why we have to eat it together. We have to drink it together. Why? Because the essence, the, the fourth essence, the fourth aspect of the Lord's Supper, it's, a, it's koinonial. Okay? I just, I just came up with that word. Okay? Koinonia, and then add the uh, al to make it adjective. <laughs> okay? So that it's rhyme. It's rhythmic, di ba? Eschatological, memorial, Okay, sacramental and pati mag koinonia. It breaks the rhyme. So it's koinonial. Okay, that's the new word. And then what did Paul say in verse 33? So then my brothers, when you gather to eat, he's talking about the Lord's Supper, you should all eat together. See? So kung na communion ka niya, gatag sa tag sa mukaon, it loses the essence of communion. Okay, that is why some people ask, Pastor, uh, uh, we've gone to some Protestant churches, they, they do like the Catholic, you know, they come forward, and then the pastor would give them the, the sacrament. You know, you know what happens, what's not good in that? You lose the essence of the co communion. You're not eating together. And the essence of the Lord's Supper is supposed to remind us that when we partake, Jesus Christ is with us. We commune with Him. Amen? Because the Bible says, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one bread, the one loaf. And so we go back to what, what Paul said. Everyone must examine himself. Anyone who eats the bread and drinks the cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty. So how do we examine ourselves? Friends, we need to look ourselves right now. We cannot, you know, receive the sacrament if our hearts are not ready. Okay? Are we keeping some sins? What things, what things desecrate? Okay? Remember, our body, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay? What sort of things did we do to this temple last week? Last few days. So right now, I'd like to ask everyone to just bow down your heads. We want ourselves to be prepared. Now we learn that in the church in Corinth, some of them were weak. Some of them got sick and a few of them died. Because they were partaking the sacrament the wrong way. Now, we don't want to commit the same mistake. So right now, let's have this moment of e examination. What are the things that we need to confess before God? What sins have you committed this week? 
Now remember, God's purpose in the Lord's Supper is for Jesus to impart grace to you. He wants to bless you. He wants to make you whole. He wants to give you strength. He wants to give you life. But sin stops us from receiving those things. In fact, because of the sin in, our, in us, the wrong, the wrong heart that we have reverses the grace of God into a curse. So right now, let's just come before God. I want you to look back. Examine your life. Let's examine our life. Let's ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me from those times that I lied. Lord, forgive me from playing around. Forgive me, Lord, if I sin through my eyes, I sin through my thoughts. Maybe we were lusting. We are guilty of lust, immorality. Now these things affect the Lord because God wants our bodies to be pure. God wants our bodies to be consecrated for Him. Now if you have committed sexual immorality, then we have desecrated the temple of God. Now friends, God loves us so much. He wants to bless us. He wants us to receive the best. But before we can receive it, we have to unpack ourselves before God. We need to open our lives and just, just confess. Right now, whatever it is, ask the Lord to reveal your sins and ask the Lord to bring healing. Right now, Lord, heal me. Lord, I know... I know, Lord God, the things that I've been doing for the past few days, it is a sin, Lord. I know it is not pleasing to you, Lord. Lord, forgive me. Let's be healed first. And let the sacrament bring the strength and the grace that nourishes our soul. Lord, we want to be nourished by you tonight. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on that cross. I cannot be saved apart from your grace. Or maybe there are some of you here tonight, you are not yet a Christian. If you are not yet a Christian, there's the Lord's Supper has no meaning to you. If you are not yet born again, if you are not yet saved, yes, you can partake the bread, yes, you can drink from the cup, but it has no meaning to you. Why? Because the death of Christ is not yet applied to you. You have to receive the death of Christ. And so for those of you, you are not yet sure. You are here with us tonight. Praise God. God brought you here. This is not by chance that you are here joining. But it was God drawing you because God loves you. God wants to save you. God wants you to have a new life. But then you have to receive that grace of salvation first. You cannot commune. There's nothing to commune if you are not yet saved. Because communion is only for those who are saved already. It's only for the saints, for the believers. And so maybe for those of you, you are not yet sure of your salvation right now. Just raise your hand and just raise your hand in faith. Humbly saying, Lord, I want to be saved tonight. Just be honest. Lord, I want to be saved. Wala yung makakita. Si Lord lag ikaw. Lord, I want, I want you to save me right now. Just raise your hand. Surrender your life to the Lord. Surrender your life to the Lord. Lord, I want to be saved tonight. Lord Jesus, please come into my life. Just like those two disciples, open my eyes to your truth. And Lord, warm up my heart with your truth. Lord Jesus, come. The Bible says, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Be saved tonight, my dear friend. This is your day of salvation. Receive the grace of God, the grace of salvation. Welcome, Jesus. Lord Jesus, come into my life.
forgive me from all my sins. Lord, I am laying down my life to you. I'm surrendering my life to you. Make me a new person, Lord. Friends, maybe you've tried it so many times and you think, you know, it's, it will just fail. No, you have to trust the Lord. Jesus is the God of second chance. No one is ever rejected when we come to Him. Surrender your life to the Lord tonight. And those of us Christians already, but then we are living a carnal lifestyle, worldly lifestyle, we are displeasing the body and blood of our Lord. Let's make peace with God tonight. Let's receive the tokens of His death with a clean heart, with a clean mind. Lord, O Holy Spirit, come. Just bring healing to all of us. Prepare us to receive the sacrament. Help us to look at each other as brothers and sisters. Remove anything that doesn't belong to you in our hearts, in our minds. And Lord, right now, I pray by birth, virtue of the Word of God, I declare healing, I declare forgiveness, I declare freedom in Christ. The Bible says, if Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. Believe that, my friend. Jesus has set you free by faith. Oh God, let your healing fall upon your people tonight. Bring healing, Lord. Bring healing. Prepare us now to receive the symbols of the body and blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.
for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after the supper he took the cup saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins drink this all of you in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for providing us this heavenly food we ask right now Lord that you would bless and consecrate this bread and this cup that they will become holy and sacred symbols of the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord and father we pray that Jesus Christ would make himself known to us as we partake Lord of this bread and this cup we now receive the grace Lord God that you want us to experience by the eating Lord God of this bread and by the sharing of the cup be glorified in our midst in Jesus name Amen and now ministering in Christ's name I give you this bread this cup
Beloved in the Lord, Jesus Christ said, This is my body broken for you. Let us eat this together and so remember him. Again, Jesus said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us drink this together and so remember him. Let us pray. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. For dying on the cross scorning its shame so that we today can experience freedom from sin we can have newness of life and eternal life by trusting in you may our covenant with you be renewed Lord through the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup May you revive and nourish our souls that we may continue to live for your purpose, for your glory. That this communion, Lord, reminds us that we are your people, that we are different from the world, and that our lives are meant to shine and be the salt of the earth. Be glorified in us, Lord, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 10 say, say, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not, not but by work, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now let us present our tithes, pledges, and love offerings to our Lord.
loving and gracious Father, you have blessed us with so much. We acknowledge that your grace is not an excuse to sin, but rather a reason to love and serve you fully. Lord, tonight we pray that as we reflect on your grace, these tithes and love offerings will be our expression of our love for you, our way to serve you and others, and our grateful response for everything you have done for us. May these reach those who need your saving grace here in the city and even those who are on the farthest corners of the world because you are the God of the city and this country and the God of all nations. Be glorified in how the church will use this, Lord, in the name of our Savior, our risen King, who is coming again. His name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing our closing song, Worthy is the Lamb.
Lord, we worship you right now. Even if this worship service is about to end, but we want to end it, Lord, by exalting you, by raising our hands, Lord, to glorify you, O God, because no one is worthy than you alone. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on that cross. Thank you, Lord, for taking those nails instead of us, oh God, being nailed. Thank you for suffering on that cross instead of us. And thank you, Lord, that that cross brought salvation, freedom, hope, and meaning and purpose to life. And Lord, we are all recipients and we want to receive the benefits of the cross the abundant grace that flows from your body. Your blood can wash away, Lord God, all our impurities. Thank you, Lord, that you declare that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, but behold, the new has come. Thank you, Lord God, that we can all be new today in Christ Jesus. Lord, bless your people, Lord. Dismiss us, Father, tonight by bringing with us, Lord, the grace that flows from, from the cross of Christ. Father, renew us. Lord, empower your people, Lord, to live a holy life, a consecrated life, a life, Lord God, that is live for your purpose, for your will. Help us, Lord, not to contaminate ourselves with the world. But help us, Lord, to be the light and the salt to the world. Lord, I'd like to pray right now for these who are kneeling here in front. Lord, they have varied concerns. Lord, you know what they're asking for. Some of them, they have tough situations. They, they're going through some problems in life. Some of them are going to take some board exam. Lord, whatever is their need, nothing is impossible to those who believe in you, Lord. So, Lord, just bless them. Lord, do not fail them. But let them receive, Lord, a promised blessing to those who ask. Even to those who are just standing there. Lord, I pray for them right now. I pray for your anointing, Lord, to touch their bodies, Lord. Renew them. Remove, Lord God, all the impurities of life from them. And grant them, Lord God the holiness that comes from your Holy Spirit. Oh God, empower your people. Protect them, Lord, from the evil one. Help them, Lord, to stand firm, not to be moved, not to be affected, Lord, by the works of Satan outside. But help them, Lord, to resist darkness and stand for your truth. And let them be the church. As we are going out, the church is also going out. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.